Welcome to Small Talk Daily for Thursday, February 19, 2009. This morning I'd like to continue with my little iTunes Object Studio example. I've got iTunes up here. You can see there's a current selection in my podcast list here. So let's go over here and bring up this UI I built this morning. Not a terribly complicated one. I can hit play and it'll start playing. Show me the currently playing track. Now you can't hear it because I'm piping this through my headphones, but if you look over here, you can see that it's playing. Now I'll hit pause and you can see it paused and then I'll hit next track and you can see a skip down to the next track. So my UI works the way you would expect it to. It's got most of the functionality. I don't have a volume setter in this. That'd be easy enough to add, but I haven't done that yet. So let's close that and we'll put this aside and let's just go in here and do a couple of things. First, what we'll do is we will browse this, bring up the browser and we'll take a look at the code. Now all I've really done is gone in here and added an initialize method so that I can hold on to the model, which is the model I built yesterday. I've gone ahead and added API points like next track, where I call the model's next track method, and then put into the track input field the current track. So I added an API to get the current track. I'll show you that in a moment in the domain model. I've also added pause and play, which does the same thing as next track. It plays and then gets the current track. So those are pretty basic. Before I go down to the domain and show you that, let's close that and we'll edit this and show you what I've done there. So let's bring up the design editor. And all this is is an input field. And if I double click on this and hit options, you'll see that I've made it not editable, which is why it's kind of grayed out. And then these buttons are pretty basic. Just a little play action and this, and it's tied to the play event. So I've got that all hooked together the way I showed you when I did the screencast on tying buttons up in Object Studio. So that's all pretty basic. Let's close the design editor down. And we'll hit no because I haven't changed anything. We'll go to the browser and let's go to the code I've got for this. Scroll down, scroll up, go here. Here's my controller and then here is my model. I added this get current track, which is a little more complicated than the others because I had to dive two levels down. I had to go get the current track, which in turn gets me a track object because tracks have things like the duration and the name and the band and all of that kind of information. All I really wanted was the name, so I had to delve two levels down, get the current track and get a piece of property information from that. And you can see it's a pretty simple API for this kind of stuff. All you have to do for properties is know what they're named and then do ats. And if you want to stuff something in them like I did with the sound yesterday, all you really have to do is do at put. So really you treat properties in com the way you treat dictionaries in Smalltalk. And that's really all there is to building a UI on top of a com interface in Object Studio. All you need to do is have your domain model that knows how to talk to the com interface and then a controller that adds the appropriate kinds of controls that you want that in turn invoke the domain model to do the right thing at the com level. So it's all pretty simple. Now my user interface isn't terribly exciting and doesn't add any value over iTunes, but that's not really the point of this exercise. The point of this exercise is to show you how you would go about building your own controller on top of some arbitrary COM API that you want to do that for. And I think this gets you started. So with that, we'll leave it there. And until next time, have fun with Smalltalk.